All right, here's the next in a series of esoteric experiments that you can do at home. This is an issue that's been discussed on the news groups recently, and the question is, uh, can you strike a cue ball, say that's a cue ball, with a stick with uh, maximum top spin, hitting it, hitting it as high as you possibly can, and achieve what's called overspin? Let me explain what that means. Uh, we all know that if you hit in the middle of the ball, uh, what's going to happen is that this ball is going to start out sliding along the, the cloth like that. And due to friction with the cloth, it's going to get some, uh, some spin, some forward spin. And before too long, it's going to be rolling on the cloth. So it's going to have a forward spin that's commensurate with its speed. If you hit with a little bit of high on the ball, uh, then you're actually giving it some forward spin just from the collision with the stick. Uh, so it doesn't need to get as much from the cloth, so it'll reach forward roll more quickly. Uh, most instructors will say that if you hit with maximum top spin, say something like that, uh, then you can about achieve forward, I mean natural roll right away, just with the stick and not have anything slide on the cloth. So the issue people are talking about is, is it possible to do a little bit better than that? Can you do it a little bit higher than this? Uh, such that you're giving it a little bit more spin than it needs for the speed that you're giving it, and that would be overspin, and that would be characterized by the bottom of this ball, a point on the bottom of this ball, a dot on the bottom of the ball, actually moving backwards uh, initially uh, when you strike it. So that's the issue. Can you achieve overspin? And it turns out that it's not so easy, easy to detect or to measure. Uh, if you're actually looking at points on the bottom of the ball, you would really need a very high-speed uh, camera to figure this out. So you could rent a high-speed camera for a thousand dollars a day or some such thing, or you could do the experiment uh, that I propose here. So here's the experimental equipment that's necessary besides a stick uh, and a ball. Uh, you need some wax paper that you can get out of the drawer uh, in the kitchen. Uh, and you need a, a pair of scissors that you can also get out of the drawer uh, in the kitchen and that you better return or you'll be in big trouble. Uh, you need a little bit of scotch tape. Um, you need uh, some sandpaper. This is 600 grit sandpaper. So what you do is you take the wax paper and you cut it uh, into a little strip. Uh, you tape that down to the tape. The idea here is that the bottom of the sandpaper is kind of slick and particularly when you put it on the wax paper it's, uh, it, it slides pretty easily. Uh, so what we're going to do uh, is put the ball uh, on top of this sandpaper because uh, the ball uh, doesn't slide so easily on the sandpaper uh, like that. So if you were to take this ball and hit it with some center ball uh, and we know the ball would start out sliding, uh, so what's that going to do? That makes the sandpaper go forward like that. There's a forward force uh, on the sandpaper. If we were to take this ball, and, I mean this, uh, this system, put the ball on the sandpaper and give it a little bit of top spin, the uh, sandpaper still goes forward. If we were to take this ball, you can see where this is. Now, uh, you have a system to, uh, to test the hypothesis. The hypothesis is that I can get so much spin that the bottom of the ball actually starts out by going backwards. So the friction between the ball and the sandpaper is going to push the sandpaper back if I can actually uh, achieve that. So let me give it a couple of tries here. I think I might have done it a little bit there. So the idea is what I'm doing is I'm lining this edge of the sandpaper uh, with the edge of the wax paper. And really if the center, uh, of, the center of mass of this sandpaper goes backwards, uh, then, uh, then I've done it. That looked close as well. I'd like to try to do get one a little bit more dramatic. What you can see uh, is that what I'm able to achieve in most of these strokes uh, is more or less natural roll topspin. Perfectly natural roll. 
And if I look at this ball, I'm actually hitting these right at the top of the stripe. Uh, and I, I find that I more or less need to be uh, above the stripe uh, without miscuing to get it to go back slightly. Nope. And you can see that that actually was slightly above the, the stripe there. Nope, I pretty much failed. So here's what happens when a fast rolling cue ball loses its speed by striking an object ball. It loses its speed and it suddenly has a ton of overspin. So it's not that overspin doesn't happen, you just don't generate much of it by striking a ball with a tip. And here's a couple other situations of overspin. Uh, here when a ball is close to the rail, it can actually go back to the rail. Uh, so here's a pretty standard trick shot based upon the idea that we just saw here. And finally, one last thing. Just in case you're not convinced uh, that if I had a ball that had a little bit of overspin on the sandpaper that it would kick it back, uh, we can demonstrate that because we know now know how to generate a little bit of overspin. If I put an object ball there and I just even slowly roll a cue ball uh, into there, then after the collision, that cue ball is going to have a little bit of overspin. So let me just give that a try and see what happens. Uh, just nice and slowly. Bingo.